What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today, I'm going to be providing you guys the ultimate Wyvern 1 to 11 guide uh, to help get you guys from floor 1 to 10 and then into 11 as quickly as possible. I'm going to talk about differences in mechanics. I'm going to also talk about things that you guys can really maximize on your teams to get to get you through. I get a lot of questions on Steam, Steam, stream, on stream where people are getting stuck on like Wyvern 7, Wyvern 8, Wyvern 9. Uh, so I wanted to hit on some, some older mechanics and really talk to you guys about that and some changes you'll have to make if you guys haven't decided to do a monochrome team from the start because chances are you haven't. When you guys started the game, you guys went through, you did your 110, you got your Mystic Summon, and then hopefully uh, you guys went right into wyvern just because when you get into wyvern it allows you to really maximize on speed because it drops speed sets and speed crit is a great way to transition um you know or speed focus or speed pretty much anything is a great way to transition into the game because with that extra speed it helps give your your new units uh turn advantage as you go through so when you guys are going through there's a couple of things that i need you guys to take note of um, when you're putting together your women team, no matter where you're at, this is something that I wish that I did uh, from the beginning. One of the biggest mistakes I made was make sure that your team in the beginning ha applies at least two harmful effects. And um, so I want to show you guys what I mean by harmful effects. We use Ken as an example. He's a great choice here, by the way. Um, but Ken applies defense break. He applies burn. Uh, but you're looking for at least two harmful effects that are applicable to the Wyvern. So things like silence, not applicable. Stun, not applicable. Uh, provoke, not ap applicable. But preferably you're looking for some some kind of unit. It doesn't have to be Ken, but pretty much any kind of unit, water or fire, um, that has attack break and or defense break. Now, other things like burn, poison, um, chance to miss, those are all great as well. Uh, primary staples, attack break, and defense break. Now, what I need you guys to understand that when you guys are working towards your Wyvern 10 comp, stats for the rest of your team are very important. Okay, so like when, let's say, let me get to my team building thing here. Uh, let me pull up, uh, let me close, get this here. Um, but when you're putting together your initial team, there are some initial goals that you guys are going to work, want to work towards. Uh, the reason being is because until you get to Wyvern 11, uh, where in Wyvern 11 he only attacks your front line, and I just did the same thing twice. <laughs> in Wyvern 11 he only attacks your front line, uh, but all the other Wyverns, it, there's, there's really no guarantee who he's going to attack. So the big thing here is, are you going to want some kind of tanky unit in the front? Absolutely. So if you're trying to prepare for Wyvern 11 up front and you've, you've happened to pull like some kind of water tank, Tank. Like, let's say you want to run like a Terran or Royal Guard. If you guys happen to only have three stars, or if you guys have a Tywin or a Crow, uh, you guys can just go ahead and throw them up front right now and just get it out of the way. If not, if you guys have happened to pull a unit like Ken, who happens to bring a lot of harmful effects to the fray, then you definitely can put that tanky unit up front, and that's pretty much what you're going to run with. From there, once you guys are constructing your team, like I said, you want to take into consideration units that have multiple harmful effects. Like I mentioned before, Defense Break is a big one. Requiem Roar is a good choice for that. Um, if you guys don't have that, again, if you guys are going to be running like three-star units, um, another good option here is Terranor Guard. He's really good. You guys can throw him in there. Um, he has, you know, defense break as well. If you guys have more than three stars and you guys, you know, you're like, oh, you know, I spent some money or, or I've just got lucky. Uh, there are other units that you can bring into the fray as well, such as Clarissa. Clarissa is also another good one. Uh, but the key thing, guys, is you want to basically get as many harmful effects as you can on your team. And on your, your primary harmful effect applicators, so let's say if Terranor Guard is going to be your primary defense breaker, uh, you want to make sure that you try to shoot for at least 50% effectiveness. 50% effectiveness, this is the biggest mistake that I made going through. 50% uh, effectiveness is really good to have on heroes that you need them, that you need them to apply harmful effects. Okay, so after you have, you know, your defense breaker, uh, it's most likely also going to be a damage dealer. Then you're going to be looking at somebody that can also heal and or apply attack break, right? So it doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to be your team. This is just, again, an example of something that you could run. Anybody could take Ken's spot that's tanky enough. Um, for, for example here, I'll show you guys what I mean. Let me swap this out here. Let's go with Terranor Royal Guard. Okay, so this is also an example that you guys can do. So let's say you had Terranor Royal Guard as your tank. Let's say you wanted to put Aureus on Terranor Royal Guard to reduce the damage that the rest of your team takes. Uh, so now you have your defense break and you have a tank unit in the front. Now you're looking at heroes that could potentially break attack. Okay, so like let's say if you guys had like a Surin. Okay, Surin's great here. Um, 
you know, or if you guys wanted to stick to all water units and you guys wanted to use, um, you know, like the free units like they give, Crows It, that you get for free. Well, not really for free, but, you know, getting the resources, Crows It's a great option because now they give you attack break and defense break. From there, um, you're just pretty much going to fill in everything else. Uh, and, and again, this is important up to Wyvern 10. So the reason I mentioned Surin uh, is because she deals a lot of harmful effects. Again, if you guys want to do a straight shot to 11 and not really make a lot of changes, another great option is Alexa uh, because she deals a lot of harmful effects, although she does not attack break, so she's not going to reduce the amount of damage that you receive. Uh, but she's really good at stacking harmful effects that could keep your team alive. So now if you're looking here, what's happening between Terranor Guard and between Alexa, I have about three harmful effects that I could have up at any given time. What this is going to do from floor 1 to 10 is it's going to keep the Wyvern from tagging you, okay? So let's say you put like Aureus on Terranor Royal Guard to keep the damage down. Even if you don't have Aureus, then it's just a matter of getting stats. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind that the stats that you're working towards when you guys are putting together your initial team um, are going to be, you know, for Wyvern 10 are going to be 8,000. Okay, at least 8,000 HP, okay, 8 to 10,000 HP is what you're looking for, and about 800 defense. Uh, you'll be able to get that as you six star your heroes and like you start, you know, plusing your gear to 15. It's just one of those overtime things. Now, granted, once you get to 11, there are going to be some changes that I want to discuss, but I want to talk about this with you guys kind of like in a roundabout way. So, once you guys have like a basic team, I'm using three star units here just so you guys don't have an excuse as to not having these units. Um, and then from there, you got your defense break and your harmful effects. And this four slot here is pretty much just ultimately going to be, be your healer. Um, in Wyvern, I mean, it's it's helpful. As you guys know, I don't have to tell you, Angelica is just a key player here. Uh, but if you have other healers, um, like, uh, for instance, another good one, if you guys have Doris, who's a light healer, also buffs defense, she's great there. You guys can use Aether. You guys can use Montmorency. You can pretty much use any healer you want. You can use Akatis in this spot. Again, this is just specifically for up to Wyvern. Uh, but you guys definitely, definitely, definitely have options. Uh, you guys can also use Aether, who you guys started with, who's also really good. Good, but the most important thing here is just to get a healer that's able to keep heals up consistently on your team. Now, this this basic stat requirement is what I recommend to you guys, especially if you're not running Aureus. If you're not running a tank in the front and you're not running Aureus, um, you know the eight to ten thousand HP with with the AK or AK with. 8 to 10,000 HP with 800 defense is going to be paramount. It's going to help you a lot. So it doesn't matter who that dragon happens to target. Um, that way you can stay up and stay alive. And then everything else after that is having the effectiveness on your damage dealers. Um, so you can land the defense breaks. You can uh, you know, apply the harmful effects so the Wyvern only attacks you one time. Um, and then you can kind of go from there. And you might be wondering, you're like, well, D, why do I need so many harmful effects on my team up front? And it's because I want to prepare you uh, for what's to come right away. Uh, the mistake that I made in the beginning, I was like, oh, I only need to land one harmful effect and then I'm okay. And then I win. And then I got to Wyvern 9 and then realized that I needed to land two harmful effects at all times. Uh, but there's a ton of different variations of teams. It doesn't necessarily have to be like an all-water team. Um, you guys can run a ton of different teams uh, based on just having the, the stuff mechanically that you need. Again, important things like attack break, defense break, or applying enough harmful effects so the dragon only gets a certain amount of turns uh, can really, really help you out overall. Um, so, like I said... The most important thing is to have the healer in place, get have the stats, and to have the harmful effects so you guys can go from there. And then as you reach toward those stats, and uh, like on your damage dealers too, and we'll talk about damage dealer stats here in a second. As you guys reach toward those stats, uh, you'll find that your wyvern teams will start to get a lot easier and easier and easier. And then your builds will start to become a little bit more flexible. And you can do this with all of the gear from wyvern. You can do this from grabbing your gear sets from Abyss. And I personally use my wyvern. Uh, team that I use all the way pretty much up through 10 um, at the time for pretty much all of Abyss minus I think I changed I put in Yuna for like one floor at the time when I was going through this but I just pretty much used my starter team and as I made adjustments that's the team that I used to get through th not this team <laughs> but uh, that's the team that I pretty much used to get through like I use Requiem Roar uh, pretty much all throughout the entire thing uh, plus Aether until I pulled Angelica and then I put in Angelica to make the adjustments um, but 
once you guys start to get through this, the only difference that's going to happen once you guys transition into Wyvern 11 is your damage output is going to need to be a lot higher, and then your your unit that's in the front is going to have to be a lot tankier. Uh, somebody brought up an interesting point to me tonight that if you don't necessarily want to run a tank uh, front line, like, let's say if you guys have like a healer and you want to run your healer as the front line tank, like let's say you're Angelica and you want to run your tank on the side and put Aureus on your tank, uh, that's another option that you guys have have as well. Um, but like I said, just for the sake of preparing for like, uh, you know, let's say if you guys wanted to do Wyvern 11 in a straight shot, um, then you definitely, definitely, definitely could run with the healer, with the tank up front, with like Aureus or something like that, uh, or pretty much anything that's going to keep him alive. Noble Oath is another great card if you guys have access to that. Again, not a necessary card. And then like running Alexa plus a healer, this will take care of all your harmful effects, your defense break, um, and of course your healer here, whoever that is, whether that's Aether or whatever, um, then you guys will pretty much be good to go. Uh, like I said, the difference is once you start getting into Wyvern 11, the defense values for your front line are just going to have to go way up as well as the HP. And then uh, right now, like my Angelica's rocking like 17,000 HP and 1,300 defense. You can in in increase that amount of defense. And if you have more defense, then your front line will take less damage and it'll make it easier for whoever you decided your healer to be to sustain. Now... As you go through Wyvern 1 to 10, it doesn't really matter what element you use, water, fire, whatever. Uh, you can pretty much put whatever team you want together uh, with whatever units you want as long as you have your staples in place, the defense break, the attack break, and the whatever harmful effects you need to apply, uh, plus your healer and, of course, damage. Um, and then as you get to 11, like I said, you'll just have to make the adjustments uh, just because the mechanics in 11 are quite a bit different. If you guys are struggling in any floor up to that, understand, just check your stats. You guys are going to be looking at, okay, do all my units have eight to 10,000 HP? Do they all have 800 defense? If the answer is yes, okay, cool. Why am I failing? So obviously I'm living long enough, but then why am I failing? Are, are my damage dealers, and this is important when you guys look at your damage dealers like Terran or Guard, and like let's say Alexa, do I have the effectiveness that they need? Okay, are are am are there like if I'm using Terran Guard, is his skill one skilled up for the defense effect chance land? All right, um, do I have a hundred percent crit rate? Do I have as much crit damage as I possibly can? Do I have enough attack as I possibly can? Is my healer whatever primary healing skills that my healer is using? Is that heal uh, skill uh, maxed out so they're healing uh, more frequently to keep my team alive? Uh, are my cards plused? Are my, is my gear plus? These are all questions that you have to ask yourself as you guys are pulling through and building your very own team. And, you know, I talk a lot about mechanics, guys. And if you really look at, you know, the mechanics of a particular team or what's required to get through a particular dungeon set, um, you could just basically, once you have those mechanics, you could just build on top, 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 build on top. Um, we'll continue to do these types of videos for each and every single dungeon once we get into them. So when I get in the golem, I'll be like, all right, look, this is your 1 to 10. This is your 11. Same thing with Banshee and any future dungeons to come. But basically for Wyvern... It's, it's really that simple. Get your attack break. Get your defense break. Um, if you don't have attack break, chance to miss works really well. Um, but defense break is paramount. Uh, make sure you have a team that can apply at least two different harmful effects and keep them up at all times. Have the effectiveness on your harmful effect uh, dealers, basically, at least 50%. Okay? That's where 50% is pretty much the sweet spot. If you get, if you can get more, great. And and then, of course, on your damage dealer, shoot for 100% crit. As much crit damage as you possibly can. As much attack power as you can. Uh, along with the other effects that you need. On your tank, if you guys are shooting for Warman 11, you're going to be shooting for at least 1,300 defense. Okay, 12 to 1,300 defense minimum. Okay, and then shoot for 20,000 HP. Okay, and this is once you crack into 11. Now... Can you do it with less HP if, let's say, you went 2,000 defense? Absolutely. But I just wanted to give you guys some ballpark figures that you guys can aim towards on your front line. And I want you guys to start working towards these stats right now, no matter where you're at in Wyvern. Um, so that way you have some kind of guideline to work towards. And again, the questions that you should ask yourself if you're failing is, are my units skilled up? Okay, if you're going to be using these units, of course. So, like, it doesn't have to be Terran or Guard, but whoever, whoever it is that you're using. Is your tie, if you're running Tywin front, is your Tywin skilled up? Okay. Um, are your stats where they need to be? Are, is your healer skilled up? This is very important. Is your healer skilled up doing what she needs to do? 
Okay, and it, on your damsel, is your crit rate 100 percent? Is your crit damage as high as it needs to be? Is you know, is your attack power as high as it needs to be? And then from there, just every time you guys get stuck, always fall back and ask yourself these core questions, and then just keep incrementally increasing your stats, and then you'll find that you'll blow through this no problem. And like I said, for me personally, I use most of my Wyvern team for all of pretty much all of my, the first 80 floors of Abyss, um, and we wrecked it. It's it's really just a stat check overall. There are some mechanically inclined floors, but outside of that, it's pretty much just a stat check. So listen, guys, hopefully this was kind of able to help you guys. I just wanted to take a little bit of time and break down the mechanics and talk about getting from 1 to 10, and then the difference uh, in stats that you guys are going to need from 10 to 11. Um, and hopefully help you guys get over that hump so you guys can get farming this good gear as fast as possible. So with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.